John Sawat was a young monk. He went to stay with a John Mun for the first time. And one day went to complain to a John Mun saying that his mind couldn't settle down. He just sat there meditating and all I could see was his mind running off. And John Mun said, well, at least you're practicing the foundations of mindfulness, knowing when the mind is distracted as a distracted mind, is practicing mindfulness of the mind in and of itself. And when John Mun was, <coughs> excuse me, when John Swat was telling me about this, he said he realized that John Mun was just trying to encourage him. He wasn't praising him for having achieved anything great in his practice. But he's pointing out that that's the beginning of the meditation, is learning how to watch your mind and notice what it's doing. Because for most of us, when we're distracted, we don't even know we're distracted. We're off living in our little thought worlds. with really very little clear sense of what's happening in the present moment. So this is the beginning. Just noticing that you're distracted. And if you find that trying to just drive the distractions away makes it even worse, then you can use one of the Buddhist techniques, which is to ignore the distraction. You know they're there. But you just don't go with them. You don't try to drive them away. You don't try to run them, run them out of the mind. But you don't have to get involved. The image he gives is of seeing something you don't want to look at, so you just turn your eyes away. And there are other images that you could use as well. A beggar is coming up, asking you for for something, and you know if you pay any attention to the beggar, the beggar will latch on to you. So you pretend the beggar's not there. Or a stray dog comes around the house and keeps sniffing here, sniffing there, hoping for food, and you know if you feed the dog, then the dog will never go away. So you don't feed it. If you pay attention to your distractions, that's one way of feeding them, and they'll hang around. Sort of bit by bit, they'll pull you in. So think of the mind as a very large room. There are going to be people off in one corner conversing. And what they may be saying may be really interesting, but you realize you've got work to do. Even if you go over and try to drive the people away after a while, they'll ask you to join them. And soon you find yourself sitting with them and having a good time, totally forgetting the fact that you actually have some important work that has to get done, i.e. the mind has to get trained. If it's not trained, it's not going to be a help. It just keeps causing you more and more trouble. So keep remembering, even though there's a conversation going back in the corner of the mind, you don't have to get involved. The breath is still here. It's still coming in, still going out. And the conversation doesn't destroy the breath. Like a meditation workshop I was teaching years back at a college, they had assigned us a room that had a really loud clock. And after the first... 20 minutes of meditation, we stopped, and everybody opened their eyes all at once and said, that clock, that's what they'd been meditating on for the past 20 minutes. So I had to remind them, the sound of the clock did not destroy their breaths. The breath was still right there. It's a matter of focusing in and just learning to stay focused despite other distractions. Over music school I went to in Seoul one time. A friend of mine had been studying with a living national treasure. He 
and so invited me to go visit the treasure. And the music school was not divided off into nice little rooms like ours. It was one large room with little booths. And in each booth someone was practicing music of one sort or another, either playing the kayagam or doing Korean opera, Korean drum. And one of the important parts of learning how to be a good musician was learning how to stay focused precisely on what you're doing and not being distracted by the people in the booths on either side. And it's the same with meditation. It's nice that we have a nice quiet place here. You get out in a good place of physical seclusion. But you can't hope that you're always going to be in physical seclusion like this. You have to learn how to maintain your focus, ultimately in all kinds of situations, peaceful and not. And one of the reasons we come into physical seclusion like this is so we can deal with the distractions in the mind. Learn how not to be pulled away by thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future, thoughts of other places. There is, that, there is that temptation. As soon as a thought comes up, you see it's unfinished and you want to complete it. Like we're trying to tie it up with a little bow before you send it off. And that's one of the first impulses you have to fight, is learning how to leave your thoughts unfinished. Half sentences, half ideas, just leave them as they are. And if the mind keeps churning up more unfinished ideas or more unfinished topics, just leave them there. Remind yourself, you want to establish an anchor in the breath. Try to breathe as fully into the body as you can. Think of the whole body breathing. It's one of the reasons why John Lee recommends that you start out with some good, long, deep in-and-out breaths. To wash out all the little potential thoughts hiding in the nooks and crannies. It's like taking a fire hose to wash out a place that has lots of little pockets of dirt here and there. And keep that up as long as it feels good. And then if you find if the, the breath is too subtle or too gentle to keep the thoughts out, then you can use the word bhutto. Just keep repeating, repeating it to yourself. You don't have to coordinate it with the breath. Just bhutto, 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 over and over in the mind. Until the mind has had enough of that, then you can settle down and actually just be with the physical sensation of breathing. But the important principle is that you can't wait until everything is really quiet and settled and all taken care of before you can meditate. You have to live with the fact that there's a lot of unfinished business in the world. Because if you sit down and think about, well, what you've got to do tomorrow or what you've got to do the next day, you could die before tomorrow or the next day. And the last thing you want is at the moment of death is to think about the unfinished business you've left behind. Because the, as John Lee said, that's like a magnet. It's going to pull you back. Here it's good to practice. Okay, there's unfinished business in the world. I mean, when people stop working, it's not because the business is all finished or their work is all finished. It's usually because they get too old or too tired, too sick to do the work and just have to leave it. So this is an important principle to keep your meditation on track. It's realizing you can't wait till everything is all nicely taken care of before you're going to let the mind settle down. You have to learn how to get the mind to settle down in the midst of a lot of unfinished stuff. Now, if you survive the meditation, okay, you can go back and you can do your work. You're not being totally irresponsible. But the mind needs this ability to learn how to just let go, put things down, and take time for itself.
It's like working with a machete. You do your work and suddenly you find that the machete isn't as sharp as it used to be. We can't say, well, I'll just keep on working and sharpen the machete when the work is done. You've got to stop the work, sharpen the machete, and then the rest of the work will go a lot easier. It's the same with the meditation. You can't say, well, I'll take care of all my business and then I'll have time to train my mind. You need a trained mind in order to do your business well whatever the business may be. And so when you find that the mind is getting dull, you've got to learn how to stop. Give all your attention to training it. And when it's in better shape, then you can go back to work. This is a basic survival skill. So as you're sitting here and different thoughts are churned up, You don't have to work with them. You don't have to deal with them. No matter how much they may seem to be calling to you, finish me off, tie me up, get me all settled, tuck me into bed, whatever they may seem to be saying, just leave them alone. Remember the, that stray dog who wants food, or the person who wants to tie you in and take something from you. They're not as innocent as they might seem. You've got the breath right here. Keep the breath full, ventilating the whole body. And try to take interest in what the breath energy is doing for you, from the top of the head down to the soles of the feet, in between the toes, in between your fingers, up your arms, all around in the chest, in the neck, in the back, shoulders down in your abdomen, go through the small intestines, large intestines, all the different parts of the body. Learn how to take an interest in what's going on here, because sometimes that's one of the reasons why the mind starts wandering off, is, it get, is because it gets bored. Well, there's nothing boring about the present moment. It's simply whether you learn how to take advantage of the opportunity to really look at what's going on. It doesn't offer maybe your typical entertainment that comes from thought bubbles, thought worlds that will pull you off someplace else. But there's a lot of interesting, fascinating stuff going on here in terms of how the breath energy is working in the body, how it interacts with the other elements in the body, how thoughts are getting formed, how the mind likes to deceive itself, how it puts barriers between one part of the mind and another. There's a lot to explore here. There's a lot to learn. And even though it may be difficult to keep coming back to the breath, it may seem discouraging, you're offering a, a gift to your future self. You're working on a skill. At some point, the skill will finally take hold. And then you'll be glad that you worked on it, that you spent all that time. So it's not the case that the only good meditation is a meditation that feels good and calm and serene. Sometimes the meditations where you have to work the hardest are, the act are actually the best ones. You learn a lot. You're developing new habits. You're developing your stick with a tividness, which is an important skill, an important attitude. So don't let the distractions get you down. Don't let them hijack your meditation. Even if it may seem you have one tiny little foothold here, not even a foothold, maybe just a toe hold or a fingernail hold. It could be the beginning of something big. So hold on to whatever you can. And as for all the other things that are going on in your mind and around you, just let them go, let them go.
they are not where your future well-being lies.